Quill, hello again from Evan in New Zealand. And um, there's been a lot of talk in the Boxford discussion groups about backlash. Um, a lot of talk about uh, how to go about uh, fixing the nut in the cross slide uh, and other ways of getting rid of backlash. And uh, I've been working on this myself. Uh, I've already made a video about making the top hat adapter, which was really useful. And I'm about to do one about um, turning a new nut for the cross slide. However, in these discussions, uh, we have a member in our group, uh, Terry Dixon, who's a very experienced um, turner, and uh, he pointed out that there's no way you're ever going to get rid of backlash, and we shouldn't be so concerned about it. Uh, we just have to learn to live with it. So then the question is, how do you live with backlash? So I decided to make this little video first, and talking a little bit about um, how you can manage backlash. There's one particular aspect that he brought up that I was unaware of, and that's concerning the depth of cut that you make uh, is quite important. And uh, so I felt it was worthwhile making a little video uh, to talk about um, how we can deal with backlash. Uh, and uh, just before I start, I'll talk a little bit about the vernier calipers. So here we go. I'm not particularly fond of these uh, digital um, calipers uh, because they seem to get quite erratic readings. I really like a micrometer better, but I don't have a metric micrometer that will measure over one inch, so I've been using the calipers. There's one little trick that's quite good, useful though that you can do on, on the digital ones. I'll reset it to zero uh, just to calibrate it as usual. And I'm wanting to make a, a cut down to 29 millimeter diameter, so I'll set it to 29 uh, right on 29.0. So that's the dimension we're wanting to achieve, and we simply press zero. And it's gone, but that's now your reference point, rather like altering the dial on the, uh, the micrometer dial on the cross slide. Now we can um, check our measurement here, and we get 0.44, so it's 0.44 oversize, and so we just need to make a cut of 0.22, so it makes life a lot easier. I'm going to try to demonstrate uh, how we handle backlash, and I've got a piece of metal here. I'm just going to trim a bit off first. Thirty-one point three nine. Thirty-one point four three. Let's say I want to take it down to thirty-one point zero zero, and that means taking off point four three. Let's say point four four, and that means taking off point two two on each side. So we want to advance point two two. Now, what I might have done in the past is advance to within like uh, point oh two or something of this of the desired dimension and then just do a, a light skimming cut to finish off and get the final dimension uh, terry tells me that i should totally avoid that that this is that to avoid fine cuts avoid it like a plague he says so instead you do two large cuts so i'm going to going in 0.22 uh, it's not particularly large but perhaps we'll go down to 0.11 with each cut actually i haven't touched the cross slide while i was doing that measurement and he recommends moving your dial around to the zero point there okay so we've got our zero point we've had to move away to make a measurement we wind past the point that we want to um, turn to and go right back to the zero point and that should be the same as where we were before and looks about right and then we go in point one one and make a cut Now I'm, I'm at 0.11, but I wanted to go into 0.22. So I'll get it spinning again and wind it forwards to 0.22. Now I've already taken out the backlash on the previous operation, so I don't have to do it again. Thirty point nine eight, thirty point nine nine, thirty point nine seven. So I'm very close to the desired dimension. You see, I measure this way. It's thirty one point oh one. So yeah, that worked out pretty well. Even though that last cut was actually pretty fine. The concern is that 
if you don't have enough load on the tool pushing it back, then the tool can wander back and forth on this backlash and go in and out and make all sorts of different dimensions. So you need to have a fairly good load on the tool when you're making that final cut. Uh, and if you do a cut that's too fine, it doesn't do that. So you want to um, do fairly coarse cuts, even right up to the last one.